Welcome to Teesdale, along the middle course of the mighty River Tees in North East England. The Tees rises in Crossfell, high up in the Pennine Hills in Northern England, before journeying through wooded valleys like this, through Middleton in Teesdale, down to Barnard Castle, and onwards to Middlesbrough, where the Tees has an important role in the city's industry. In this video, I'll be explaining to you the importance of the River Tees as it flows through distinctive characteristic landscapes from its upper course through this middle course and then down into its lower course as it widens and deepens towards its mouth in the North Sea. The Tees rises at Cross Fell in the North Pennines of England. The deep roots of the North Pennines are slates and volcanic rocks which formed between 500 and 420 million years ago. The course of the Tees is interrupted in its upper course by the dam that forms Cow Green Reservoir. The reservoir is used to control the flow of water down the Tees so that reservoirs downstream can be filled for abstracting water for industry and for drinking. Cow Green Reservoir was constructed between 1967 and 1971 at great expense amid furious controversy. Conceived to supply the needs of the great manufacturing industries of the Northeast, the project involved the flooding of sensitive and unique alpine environments, home to rare plants with a continuous history of survival dating back to the last ice age, including spring gentian, the Teesdale violet and several species of orchid. The Tees, however, is most well known for its abundance of waterfalls, like here at Cauldron Snout. This is the first place along the river's course that we see the wind silt formed by the stretching of the Earth's crust some 295 million years ago, allowing molten rock to rise up and spread out between the layers of carboniferous rocks. It cooled and solidified underground to form the windsill, a vast sheet of hard dolerite, known locally as windstone. After millions of years of erosion, the windsill is now exposed to the surface in several places, forming the dramatic waterfalls and other cliff features in Upper Teesdale and along the North Pennine Escarpment. Ten kilometres downstream, we leave Cauldron Snout to arrive at High Force Waterfall, the most impressive feature along the entire course of the River Tees. According to the poet Simon Armitage, a roaring drumming volley of white water hurls itself over a cliff face and thunders into a deep pool 21 metres below. The noise of high force is amplified by a semicircular gorge into which the river is delivered, a feature which also magnifies its visual appeal. It's so perfect it could have been designed. I agree with Armitage in that I think High Force Waterfall is one of, if not the, best example of a textbook waterfall anywhere to be found across the UK. High Force plunges over the windsill and below the windsill you can see layers of sandstone and limestone, part of a sequence of rocks that make up most of the North Pennine landscape. Though softer rocks are undercut by the continual plunging motion of the water through forces of abrasion and hydraulic power. Eventually that undercut fails to support the rocks above and they collapse down, the waterfall retreating upstream and leaving a gorge in front of it. Another three kilometres downstream, we arrive at another set of falls. Here at Low Force is another characteristic set of waterfalls, typical of the Tees Valley as it flows through this area of windstone. You can see it either side of the waterfalls, here and over here, sticking up, and uh, that's where the magma's risen up um, and form that, that layer of hard igneous rock the water then has to flow through and over can't penetrate that rock, it flows over the top, and it's only where there are bands of weaknesses, fault lines in it, that the water's able to duck down and, and start to erode the sandstones and limestones underneath. After low force, the Tees continues along an increasingly wooded valley, first calling past Middleton in Teesdale, before then arriving into Barnard Castle. Deeper and wider, the river is now firmly in its middle course. The river significantly widens out, as well as getting deeper in its middle course, as here near Barnard Castle. Still in a relatively deep channel, the river is winding its way through the countryside with less steep falls and certainly a deeper and faster flowing character. At confluences like this one, the flow of the river slows down due to the 
turbulence of the water joining from the tributaries. It creates islands like this one where vegetation is able to grow on the sediment that's deposited by the river where it has much lower energy. With a population of around 5,500 people, Barnard Castle is the most significant town we've visited so far on our journey. Notable for its bridge, Barnard Castle was never a centre of industry but the river was important in providing jobs through the medieval period. Barnard Castle is named after the castle that sits on the riverside. Established in the 12th century, it gave the town its name and was passed down through the Balliol family to eventually fall into the hands of King Richard III. After his death in 1485, the castle fell into ruins and survives now as a Grade 1 listed tourist attraction. As for the Tees at this point, it's becoming increasingly deep and wide as can be seen from this footage from the bridge. As we continue downstream on our journey from Barnard Castle, the river continues to widen and deepen and become more important to industry. This is nowhere more true than in Darlington. The wider valley here allowed the town to grow and became important to the railways. Stevenson's Stockton to Darlington Railway was the first to operate anywhere in the world, carrying minerals and coal from Upper Teesdale down to the port at Middlesbrough. We can see from the satellite image from Google Earth the fields now being used for arable agriculture and pasture land. Leaving Darlington behind, the Tees then flows through Middlesbrough. At its widest and deepest state, nearest to the river's mouth, the Tees plays an important role in the history and industry of this town. The Tees was an important transport route, moving coal from the Durham coal fields inland towards the coastline where it could be shipped around the country and to the rest of the British Empire. Middlesbrough grew around this as well as then smelting steel. The chemical industry continues to be based around Billingham and Seal Sands, both on the north banks of the River Tees. The river also serves as a cultural symbol and a touchstone to history for the people of Middlesbrough, being the home of their football club on the riverside. During its 137 kilometre journey from Cross Fell, 754 metres above sea level, towards Hartlepool and Redcar on the North Sea coast, the river drains at 1,800 square kilometres and provides drinking water. It's done with the most beautiful vistas at the most powerful waterfalls in the country and then providing a cultural, historical and heritage link to England's past. The journey of kings from Barnard Castle to industrialisation and the role of great innovators and engineers in building an industrial heritage in Darlington and Stockton and onwards to Middlesbrough, a modern thriving town built on its industry of chemical works, steel works and exporting to the rest of the world.